Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super small form factor water-cooled Ryzen 5000 APU build. We're actually going to be using the new Ryzen 5 5700G and uh, hopefully I can make this work. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little while now, and if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I do a lot of these smaller APU builds, but they're all air-cooled. With this one here, I really wanted to go water-cooled with it, just to see if it could be done in a super small case. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So with this build, I'm kind of going to be shooting from the hip. It's not a build tutorial, but I just wanted to show you how I'm going to put this thing together. Now starting off here with one of the most important parts to a small form factor build, the case. This is a cheaper case that I picked up on Amazon. It's a good sorry SR01. And the main reason I chose this one is because once we remove the hard drive brackets, we actually have 79 millimeters of clearance from the CPU to the top of the case. I've done some rough measurements, and the Corsair H60 liquid cooler that I'm going to be using looks like it will fit inside of here with the motherboard and everything we're going with. Speaking of the motherboard, I went with the ROG Strix B550 Mini ITX. I've already got my M.2 NVMe installed here. It's a one terabyte inland drive. And as you can see, we have that 5700G already in the socket. But yeah, I had to go mini ITX to fit it inside of this case. When it comes to these Ryzen APUs, they love fast RAM. So I actually went with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4400 megahertz. This is a bit expensive. Usually I go with 3600 megahertz RAM and overclock it to 4000, but I really wanted to get as much as I could out of this 5700G. Since this is such a small form factor case, we really don't have room for an ATX or an SFX power supply. So I went with a 300 watt Pico power supply. This is made by Rgeek. I've actually never tested this style before, but it runs on 12 volts and I have a 240 watt 12 volt adapter that's going to be plugged into the wall. So we do have a power brick with this unit. And when it comes to the cooler, I went with the Corsair H60. This is 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. I've used one in the past in a smaller build, and it worked out just fine. So I figured we could try it with this one. So what I'm going to do is walk you through the steps I used to build this one. It's not going to be a build tutorial, but it'll just give you a basic idea. Now I can go ahead and mount this motherboard inside of the case, because with this H60, it's going to use the built-in plastic AM4 brackets on the motherboard. So I just want to make sure everything fits here and it looks good. And given that this is a small form factor case, we do have a lot of room in here. And uh, once it's all wired up with all of the case wiring, like the front panel, the USB 3, and the audio, looks something like this. I will clean it up by the end. Next thing I did was just mount the cooler. And uh, it's going to be a tight fit, but I think we can make this work. And when it comes to the case I'm using, this can be used in two different orientations, vertical or horizontal. I've placed the feet on it, so we're going to have this set up vertical, kind of like a mini tower case. That's exactly what I want to go with, but if it doesn't work out in the end, I can always use it horizontally. Since I'm going to be mounting this radiator inside of the case, I needed a low profile fan, so I went with a Noctua NF-A1215. The stock fan that came with the Corsair H60 is just a bit too thick to fit everything inside of here. And with this fan setup, I want to do a little bit of experimentation just to see what works out well. I might mount the fan in the back, pulling air in, pushing air out. I might mount it in the front. I'm not sure yet. I wanted to do a quick radiator fitment just to see how well it would sit inside of here. And it does look like we're going to have enough room to put everything together. I don't have the RAM installed. I don't have my power supply yet. But I just wanted to make sure that we would have enough clearance when we put the top back on this thing. And when it comes to the power supply, I mounted this with some plastic standoff. Since we have this graded case here, there's plenty of holes here to mount everything. And once I get everything cleaned up, I can get the wires out of the way and then mount my radiator to the side panel. And it looks something like this. So uh, yeah, it does fit, but I will have to add a couple little washers to bring up the side panel just a bit. And I was really hoping that I could get four screws to line up without doing any drilling. But right now I have two holding the radiator and fan to the side panel here. And later on I can always drill two holes. But I really don't want to mess it up. And it's holding it just fine. So basically what I need to do now is go ahead and mount the side panel. But while I'm doing that I'm going to be super careful to make sure I don't have any kind of kinks or bends in these lines here. So yeah, it went together really nicely, and as you can see, this thing is tiny. It's not as small as some of the other mini ITX builds I've done on my channel, but we're working with a 120mm AIO in this thing. And like I mentioned, I did have to raise this side panel up just a hair, but uh, I think it still looks really good. Now when it comes to the power supply, I needed something to provide a lot of power because I do want to overclock this. I'm going to overclock all eight cores on this thing, and it can pull a lot of power. 
So I needed more than just a 120 watt power supply like I use with other mini ITX builds. So I opted for a 240 watt power supply here and it needed to be 12 volts. So it is pretty big as you can see, but it will provide adequate wattage for this little build here. And I've tested a lot of different power supplies from Amazon and eBay in the past. And a lot of the times when they're saying this is 120 watts or 150 watts, they're really only putting out a maximum of 65. I've done some testing with this and it will put out 240 watts. So I've gone through and installed Windows 10 Pro on the internal M.2 drive here. And the way I have the fan set up right now, it's pulling air in from the side panel, pushing it over the radiator, and hopefully it's venting out the sides. We do have a lot of ventilation with this case. So now it's time to get into some testing. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. All right, so I've been up and running for a little while and everything's been working out really well. I did do a few tweaks to the CPU and the GPU here. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5700G, 8 cores, 16 threads. Now, usually the base clock on this is at 3.8 gigahertz with a boost on a single core up to 4.6, but I've overclocked all eight cores to 4.5 gigahertz. We have that 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4400 megahertz and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. And again, I've done a little bit of a tweak with this one. We'll head over here to CPU-Z, graphics, I've overclocked this to 2400 megahertz from 2000. So we're up 400 megahertz here and that should make a little bit of a difference. But yeah, even the temps on this thing have been pretty decent so far and we'll take a look at that by the end of the video. But the first thing I wanted to do was show you some benchmark results. So first up we have Geekbench 5 and keep in mind that I have all eight cores overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. These are some pretty impressive scores here. Single coming in at 1517. Multi, 9,574. Moving over to Cinebench R23, total multi-core score, 14,959. Now I'm going to move over to some GPU benchmarks using 3D Mark. First up, we have Night Raid with a total score of 20,102. Next on the list, Fire Strike, 4,702. And finally, Time Spy with a 1,892. These are definitely the best scores that I've ever seen out of a Ryzen APU so far, and it really comes down to that overclock I have on the CPU and GPU. Now it's time to see how this thing really games. I do have Afterburner running up in the top left-hand corner. First up, Genshin Impact 1080p, high settings. It's going to run it at 60 just fine. If you take a look at that CPU package power, it's peaking out around 55 watts every once in a while, but this gets much higher with other games as you're about to see. Moving over to Call of Duty Warzone, we're at 1080p, but I do have dynamic resolution enabled, and we got an average of 62 FPS out of this one. Gas is moving in. New safe zone located. Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, medium settings, I got an average of 66 FPS out of this one. On other APUs, I've had to take the resolution down, I've had to take it down to low or low medium mix, but here we got all medium settings at 1080p and it's running great. GTA 5 performs really well with the 5700G, especially with this overclock. 1080p, normal high mix, I got an average of 87 FPS. CSGO 1080p high settings, we averaged 133 FPS, and you'll see it jump up to around the 180s, but by the end of this, my afterburner log stated that we were at an average of 133, which is still really, really playable, especially at high settings. Overwatch 1080p high settings, an average of 82. This is a very well optimized game and it's run well on APUs in the past, but I've never really been able to take it up to all high settings at 1080p like this.
And finally here, we have Cyberpunk 2077. This is just a really hard one to run on APU. So first up, we're at 720p, low settings. We got an average of 49 FPS. Not great, but it's much better than any other APU that I've tested so far. But we can run this at 1080p low, 30 all day long. So another thing I like to take a look at when I build these small form factor PCs is power consumption, and this actually pulls a lot of power for just being an APU build. Uh, idle, 28 watts. Gaming, we average 77. And in my extreme test, which maxes out all eight cores, 16 threads, and the built-in GPU, it pulled 206 watts from the wall. But, but keep in mind, we are overclocked on all eight cores here and the GPU. And when it comes to average CPU temps, this did much better than I thought it would. At idle, we averaged 41 degrees Celsius, while gaming, 65. And in a 10-minute Cinebench R23 run, it reached 85 degrees Celsius. Now, if you did have this max out for a longer period of time, I'm sure we could hit thermal throttle with it. But in everyday use case scenarios like gaming, you're going to be just fine with it. So overall, I think this small form factor build turned out great. It was definitely a pain getting everything inside of here, but if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description. At the time of making this video, the only way you can get your hands on a 5600 or a 5700G is through like eBay or AliExpress. It's kind of gray market. But AMD has announced the retail release date of the 5600 and the 5700G, and that's going to be coming out August 5th, 2021. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little build, just let me know in the comments below. Like I mentioned, if you're interested in putting something like this together, links are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.